Hey everyone, this is a series where I can talk about projects that maybe I didn't film or commission stuff and just kind of go through what the thought process was uh, while I was working on something in this particular one, which is the one to one scale. So basically life size bust or wall hanger from uh, Blackheart models. And that's the alien head. First of all, very fun to paint. A, a nice refreshing break from painting miniatures. I've had the model for a while, probably like four years. It's just migrated with me whenever I moved. Never really had like a good, a good scheme or an idea for it. The, the head was sculpted and referenced from, it looks like, Aliens, which is the second movie in the franchise. And when I looked at reference pictures for those aliens, they're pretty much like, you know, you look at the behind the scenes photos and you see the guys in the alien suits and stuff and you look at the colors and they're pretty much just black with silver bits here and there. I guess they didn't have to go really crazy with painting them up because the movie's pretty dark. The only details of the aliens that are revealed, they're usually pretty quick, you know, flashes of light, enough detail for the, the viewers to get you know, scared by what they saw, like the rest of the shots were pretty dark where you saw outlines and, you know, various shapes that just kind of made the movie awesome. It's, it's my favorite. So finding references that I wanted to use because I couldn't use those or I didn't want to use those because the, the bust is expensive itself and I couldn't justify it by just painting it black and then picking out some silver bits and then calling it done. So I looked around and I saw references for Geiger's alien and I saw the old toys where top of the alien's head like right where the, the little detail from where their mouth kind of ends and goes up their head they usually have like some kind of you know edge of a, a shell kind of thing going on and I've seen that clear and then underneath there's some kind of like skeletal structure and it's it's very interesting and I think I pulled one from the video game Alien Isolation. And that's the one that had like the human skull kind of half showing inside that translucent top part of their head. And I thought, well, you know, let's let's see if we can do that. I've never airbrushed like a, a skull on a surface that was like that. It had a, you know, certain curves in it that didn't really work with the skull. And I was like, well, you know, it's paint. If we try it and it doesn't work, then, you know, we paint over it. We reprime it and it's not like it's thick paint that's going to show up anywhere. So I started looking up some uh, skull shapes and, you know, once I got it down, I just kind of started to freehand it onto the model. And I did it in white over black first because I wanted to colorize it. And I figured, you know, hey, let's just work with grays and whites over the black and then just do a monochrome kind of thing black and white and then we can color it using tints and stuff. And that's what I did. I started out with white, tried to mess with the color a little bit, figure out which direction I wanted to go. The reference picture, you know, kind of looked a greenish yellow in that translucent area, almost like the, the skull was behind that, that shell. But then there, maybe there was some liquid in between, whatever, it, it, it looked cool. <laughs> But because we had to kind of like fake it, I was like, well, you know, we'll paint it and we can, you know, we don't, we don't have to get too detailed on too many parts and I'm going to, you know, coat this thing with a bunch of clear coat. So that'll kind of give that, that glassy effect. It was just a matter of, you know, cutting some shapes out of a piece of cardboard and freehand airbrushing it all on there and trying to make it kind of match up on both sides. It was a lot of back and forth. I made a mistake and all, all the different coats were on there. And we're talking like really thin down coats of tints like blues, greens, and yellows. It's really hard to, it's a lot of back and forth trying to get it to match up. So I had to deal with that. It turned out really good. We masked off, did all the silvers using, uh, it was the first time using the Vallejo metal color. They airbrush like a dream and they have tons of colors. We built up a frame also for the alien head because this particular kit, which isn't available anymore, it's the head and then hands and you're supposed to put them inside of the frame so that they look like, you know, trying to uh, get out of that vent and come get you. It was probably 20 bucks in like wood and screws and bolts. Thing weighs like 50 pounds. I wanted to wrap things up and let you guys know that 
kind of got the bug for painting this large stuff. I mean, if I could just do large stuff all day and get paid for that, that would be awesome. Um, but the next one that I have is also from Blackheart Models and it's called uh, Colonist. It's a one-to-one -one scale bust that it's a female and she's got a face hugger on her also from Alien. It's just clamped around the head and then the tail going around the neck. If you guys would like to see that, then just comment below and we'll go from that and then you know, I'll be sure to, to keep the camera with me when I film. I need to be better about that, but it's hard to just, you know, it, it kind of slows things down if you try to film everything that you do all the time. But, you know, I want my videos to come out more and have more stuff to show off. Turning on the camera is probably the best deal. Here's some glam photos and, and video of the alien head. Hope you guys enjoy and I will see you later.